15 years ago, nobody asked for Unity. If you ask game developers now, you have no game developers that say they want to build a build old engine unless they want to build something obscure. I cannot see why it wouldn't be the same with Network Engine. Some people just love building engines, right? I am today. Uh, I'm co-founder and CTO of Coherence. Uh, I've been a coder since I can remember. I started in the demo scene in the 90s. In 2006, I met this guy uh, that had a game idea, what became Limbo. And we spent the next six years uh, developing uh, Insight, uh, which was the next title. It was kind of the big driver's license in, in becoming an entrepreneur. I started a few companies back in Slovenia. The last one was Motivity. We started working with more and more games companies. The last one was Supercell. The past uh, five for five years or so. Uh, we've been building coherence together with Dino. The idea came from me meeting David Helgerson. I I've always been so fascinated about what Unity did to the game industry. Revolutionized it in a way that, that kind of exceeds anything else that has happened. We're both veterans and have seen the trends go up and down. And something like playing together and multiplayer is just something that, that is so ingrained in the human nature. We tried to figure out what are the components we need to do something killer that can revolutionize the industry. And that, that's kind of like how, how Coherence came about. I was sold pretty fast, let's say. And I'm happy we've been uh, doing this, even though it's been hard as <laughs> It's been hard as on this side, we have the old part of town, which is basically an island and uh, surrounded by a canal. There's so many game developers. I think there's more game developers in Malmö than uh, Denmark and Norway combined. Here we're at uh, Game Habitat Dev Hub. This is a startup house of sorts for game developers. Here's us, non-capitalized C, as it should be. So on the walls, you can see some of the games that were built in Malmö. This is a fantastic space for events, for lunches, for hanging out, uh, all community type stuff. So we're in Sweden and every proper Swedish office should have a sauna or bus too, uh, as they call it. This is where the, all the ideas um, are created, but also killed. Here's our office, coherence. It's cozy, here's Chiro, say hi. <laughs> Building multiplayer in a way that I would want to use it as a game developer is definitely a worthwhile uh, challenge. When you are just using coherence, it's all UI, it's all drag and drop, it feels like magic. Beneath that, there's many layers and the core of coherence is extremely advanced. So one of the coolest things about coherence is how easy you can get started with it. And if you have a single player game, it's super easy to add multiplayer connectivity to it. The core of coherence is extremely advanced. Uh, it is something that has required a lot of time, a lot of intelligent engineers. <laughs> yeah. I was about to say, and you, but I meant, I meant you as one of them. Here you have uh, two clients side by side. And you can see these two characters are now simulated each on its own machine or client. I can also switch one of the clients to map overview mode and then use mouse click to instantiate more uh, NPCs. And now these NPCs are walking around the world and they're being controlled by an AI. I have two clients. I have the left client and the right one. The ones simulated on the left side, if I click on them on the right side, the authority is going to immediately transfer. So that means that an AI that was before simulated on one machine is now immediately simulated on the other machine. I can simulate an AI on my machine, then I can transfer it to a dedicated server, then somebody else can adopt it. And when we all disconnect, the state of that AI is still going to be there in the world. You know, when I was a young game developer, all game designers wanted to create an MMO. And it was a bit a laughing stock because, of course, you cannot as a single developer. But that's kind of what we are trying to break. We actually see individuals do bigger projects because we help with all of the hard parts of building an MMO. We are democratizing how games are made multiplayer and it gave you experiences you never experienced before that no big team would make. And that, that those are the multiplayer games I'm excited to see. Having the ability to do authority transfers instantaneously gives you so many options. Here I have a fox running around that I control and uh, these deer are now controlled by an AI. When I get close to these deer, they start running away from me. Here you can see in this X-ray mode that both the fox and the AIs are all gray. And that means that they are simulated on the same machine, which is my current client, but I can spin up a dedicated server. These deer are now red, which means that the red server is simulating them. I, of course, can add a second simulator 
And now these two simulators are going to split up the simulation of the world by location. If entities are on one side of the line, they are red. On the other side, they are blue. And you can see as the deer are walking across the border, they change color. And that means that you can build much, much, much bigger worlds with more entities than before. But what if the number of entities in each of the areas is not even? One possible solution that we implemented here is uh, dynamic clustering. Now the clustering and the splitting of the world is, changes dynamically based on how many entities there are in each of the areas. Now we add one more simulator and you'll see now we have five areas. If I go into the world and I chase these deer towards these borders, you can see that how the border is actually moving away to accommodate the deer currently simulated on the, that server. We also have solutions with machine learning where we're actually using how much entities are switching servers as a heuristic, because you don't want to actually do that too much. And you can do dynamically adaptive uh, clustering this way. It used to be the tallest building in Scandinavia, and now they surpassed it in Gothenburg a few months ago. I can see that from my house. No. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Let's yeah. go uh, have a look if we can see your house. We are launching version 1.0 of Coherence. And what does it mean? It means we have a version of coherence that we trust you can develop and release a game on. The bigger milestones are the first games, um, which are coming out next year. That's going to be amazing to see. So 1.0 is going to have something called client hosting. So now you're going to be able to launch games on Steam and on, on other systems without even uh, using our backend. So completely for free, which is how we cater to how indie games actually work. During COVID, you could see how multiplayer games became much more important for people. There's so many friends here that they couldn't hang out in person. There was always one friend who was the host of it and the data would get saved there. If that friend didn't have time, we couldn't play it. One of the things that I love about our 1.0 release and what we're bringing to it is you're actually going to be able to take that data and upload it online and then have many more players playing at the same time. For me that would be a game changer for that. We're also doing something called Bloating Origin. For developers who've used uh, engines like Unity, the space you can use is quite limited. So we built this demo where we're using a map system to give the player ability to teleport anywhere in the world. You can see all these locations of interest. Every time I buy something, I add a new persistent entity in the world. So whoever joins this game at any point will see which location belongs to whom. And this essentially gives you the ability to build a game that has a distance from here to Mars and far beyond with uh, the precision of a millimeter, basically. And that's pretty cool. I think that's game changing as well. What today is saying is that we are supporting extreme last worlds. <laughs> yes, TLDR. TLDR. Did you see this uh, toy here we have? Yeah, children can actually operate this. There we go. It's couch co-op. Yeah. <laughs> so life is the ultimate multiplayer game. Sometimes it's a massively a multiplayer online game. Sometimes it's just like a session-based GGPO game. Life? Yeah. <laughs> Why couldn't like a one person build an MMO? Mm. Why not? The idea of coherence is to commoditize networking. There's absolutely no reason to build your own network stack. So here we have a side-by-side -side view of two clients in space. On the left client, we spawned 5,000 spaceships. They are all replicated on the right side. But if you look at the numbers here, it's actually fewer than 5,000 because we use a cool feature in Coherence called Area of Interest. I only see things that I need to see. And the system is automatically making sure that no more than the required amount of data is synchronized. Here we now spawned 10,000 spaceships. And you can see as I move around the world, all of them are moving very smoothly. And if I click on one of them, I can see the interpolation frames. Uh, I can also see that when I'm moving back uh, from the spaceship, the level of detail is changing on it. When I'm up close, maybe I use 32 bits for every position a vector component. When I move farther away, maybe, you know, 10 is enough. <laughs> my job is to do the things that falls between the chairs. One of my jobs is also to buy more chairs. <laughs> Look at those tables, there's no chairs. <laughs> Can I start again? 
in 10 years time, I want to look back and see that the amount of interesting multiplayer games actually were rising. I want to see us as being the force enabling and sparkling all the creativity that made all of that happen. I'm, I'm doing an investor presentation these days, so I'm doing a lot of these thoughts, but it's, it's so hard to get out uh, in a coherent way. 